Bonanza. In that room back there is a wealthy theater organ. They were originally made in Germany to accompany silent movies, hence the name theater organ. There's 1,121 pipes back there, plus all the other instruments that you heard playing, the glockenspiel, bells, drums, cymbals, everything's all back there. Can all be played from the console in the corner, and that also plays the 28 tubular bells that are in the Deegan Chimes unit in the clock tower out behind the powerhouse. Albert and Bessie played every instrument you've seen in the house just exactly like I just did. They were all automated from day one. The Welty piano downstairs had a paper roll on it, the holes in the paper told the piano how to play. Very much like the old computers with those cards with the holes in them. Now up here they have another role player with more rolls with holes in them to tell the organ and piano how to play. But we've left 1939 behind us over in the other part of the house because we don't play those paper rolls anymore. They're way too delicate. But Albert would love the way we do tell the organ how to play with a small computer disc in the next room. Uh -huh. But the mechanism is exactly the same. You can hear the bellows and everything back there. Uh, if those of you that live close by, we have an organ concert in June in this room. We uh, charge money for that concert, and we use that money to pay the organ tuner who comes annually. There's very few theater organs left anywhere, and very few of those work. So this is a very special treasure. Actually, the whole house is pretty special. Albert worked on this house from 1922 to 1931. Well, Albert and sometimes close to 100 other people, don't get me wrong, didn't do it all by himself. Now, President Hoover put a stop to everything out here, indirectly. They were setting aside beautiful places for folks to come and enjoy for many generations, and they called those places national monuments. And uh, they picked Death Valley to be set aside, and uh, they sent surveyors out to do that. And when they got here, they found the mistake in the old California survey. This is not the land that Albert Johnson bought from the homesteaders. There was a mild mistake, and Albert's land is over there somewhere. Oops. When Albert realized he just built an almost $2 million vacation home on the wrong land, he stopped building immediately and sent everyone away. There were some trucks out in Ty Canyon that I swear are sitting right where they were left that day. Now, Albert negotiated with the government, and he did in 1937. Franklin Roosevelt passed an act of Congress, and that allowed Albert to get the land back here. But he didn't start building anything else. Lucky for us, all the stucco buildings here on the site were done by 1929, 1930, they finished the powerhouse, and they were just getting started with the landscaping. That would have been the lovely tiled pool out between here and the parking lot today, and the courtyard. Many of the supplies to finish that are in the basement still, but Albert never finished it. Now there's a couple of suppositions why not. Local fellow out here told me once what a shame it was that Albert went broke in the crash. Now, in the late 20s, Albert was spending a lot of time out here and probably wasn't paying enough attention to the business back in Chicago. He did lose the insurance company that he was president of in the crash uh, to a little company you might have heard of called Sears. And he and Bessie sold their Chicago mansion in 33. They moved to Hollywood. They bought a house from Samuel Goldwyn, and they were down to their last few million. If that's your definition of broke, then I guess that's what happened to Albert Johnson. He was not as ludicrously wealthy as he had been in the 20s. By the 30s, the Johnsons were just rich. See the difference? But that might, might not be the only reason why he didn't build anymore. 1933, something else happened. Death Valley, National Monument. Now, folks like you, rich people with cars, came to see it. And when they got here, they wanted to see something else they'd heard about. Scotty's Castle. Total strangers came to the door. Albert and Bessie were smart. They charged them a dollar and ten cents tax, and they took them on a tour of their house, and it was fun. They loved sharing with folks like you the great joy that they had found out here in the desert. The, the beautiful desert, this well, amazing house, Scotty's crazy stories. And Albert and Bessie shared the fun out here until Bessie died suddenly in a car accident in 1943. Albert was heartbroken. He didn't want to come here without her, and he offered to sell the whole place back to the federal government in 1944. Been surrounded by a national monument for over 10 years, maybe they'd do tours and share the fun with folks, and the government said, no, thanks anyway. 
Albert didn't have any children, so he established a religious charity. And when he died in 1948, he left the Gospel Foundation everything, including Scotty. And they ran this as a bed and breakfast until 1970, when they sold the place to the National Park Service. Albert Johnson was 76 when he died. Anybody remember the train wreck and what the doctor said? You'll never see 40.